السلام عليكم يعطيكم العافية معكم الطالبة هذه الطالبة من دفعة أوفردوز وإن شاء الله اليوم راح أشرح بهذا الفيديو عن ال vertebral column like the axial skeleton so let's start the video بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم so what is the vertebral column well so when I say vertebral column also known as the spine and the backbone is one of the main parts of a human bone skeleton especially the axial skeleton it is a flexible column extending from the neck to tail, made of series of bones which are called the vertebrae. So, let's go a little bit with this tariff and we'll try to explain the possibility. So, first of all, we'll focus on the word vertebral column. So, when I say vertebral column, what does column mean? Well, column means that it has a column shape. And when I say vertebral, so this column is actually made of vertebrae. So, what is vertebrae? Vertebrae are irregular bonds that made up the vertebral column. Okay, so uh, we're gonna get into their structure soon in the video. So now I just need you want you to be familiar with the vertebral column and its other names. So it also called spine. So spine means uh, why do we call it the spine? Because uh, the vertebral column, okay, uh, forms. Uh, a canal or may maybe in circles a canal this canal contains that um, what we call the spinal cord okay uh, which is a very very important nerve and we're gonna get into its function soon in the video so I just want you to be familiar now with the spine we also call it the backbone so backbone why do we call it the backbone because uh, it is uh, considered the only bone presented in your back and when I say back I mean the dorsal aspect of your body so I said it's one of the main parts of a human body skeleton so uh, scientists when they study the skeleton they actually divide the human skeleton into two uh, things uh, we call them the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton so the axial skeleton, we call them in this name because they are close to the midline of your body. So all the bones that are close to the midline, we call them axial skeleton. And since the vertebral column is actually located in the midline of your body, so it's definitely a main part of the axial skeleton. Um, okay, so it is also, we say, it's a flexible. هلا من وين الvertebral column ببلش وبيخلص؟ الvertebral column uh, بيبدأ من uh, النك أو ممكن نحكي من ال like من الoccipital okay uh, of the of the occipital of the skull until uh, the tailbone which is the coccyx okay so I just wanna show you a picture soon but just uh, later in the video of it and made in 3D uh, picture of it as well. So yeah, we say it's actually made of series of bones which are called the vertebrae. So the units of the vertebral column, okay, of the structural units are actually the vertebrae. So uh, we know that our skeleton is made up of 206 uh, bones, okay, the adult skeleton I mean, okay, because um, like uh, uh, children's and small babies, their skeleton is not actually completed. The, so it's have more than 206. But I'm talking about the adult skeleton, so never mind. Okay, uh, so 26 of these bones are the vertebrae of the skeleton. Okay, so now we're gonna finish 26 bones of 26, uh, 206 bones of your body. Okay. So, what is the function of the vertebral column? Uh, the main function is to protect the spinal cord. As we said, we say that we call them the spine. So, we call it the spine because it protects the spinal cord. And what is the spinal cord? So, the spinal cord is, um, and the main function of it, is to conduct sensory information from the peripheral nerve system to the brain. Well, uh, the spinal cord have such kind of, the ferra, the bit of the nerves, we talk about peripheral nerves, which are the nerves of the spine. Okay, they are connected to the whole body. So any signal or any thing change in the any change in the body, it is passed on through these peripheral nerves, but then it goes to the spinal cord, which is يعتبر النيرف الرئيسي وهذا النيرف الرئيسي بيروح وصل على البرين اللي هو اللي نحكي عنه processing center. 
آه وبدل البرين بيحدد يعني بيعمل بروسيسنج لهاي السيجنالز وبالاخير بيحدد استجابه معينه تنتقل ايضا عبر السبينال كورد الى البريفرال نيرز حتى توصل لمكان اللي رح تعمل فيه افكت سو ليتس كيب اون ذا فيرتيبرال كولم So also it's provided stiffening for the body and attachment for the bacteria, bacterial and the bilbus girdles and many muscles. So metal ay adme, okay. Bedo il tuan amud el fikari rahir bot majmoa min el muscles as well. Yani el adalat. و كمان بدها بتلعب دور كتير مهم في ربط الابنديكولر بترتبط مع الابنديكولر سكوتر وخصوصا ال shoulder and the pelvis girdles of the abandicular skeleton and that we're gonna get into them in another videos so I'm not gonna get into details right now because the main things I'm going to explain not to not done in this video is the the vertebral column so let's keep on So in order to understand the vertebral column, we have to divide it into small units or into small regions so that we can understand it much better. And this is exactly what scientists have done. Okay, so let's start with these regions. First of all, we have the cervical vertebrae. Cervical vertebrae are the vertebrae that are present in the cervical region. Okay, so we have also the thoracic vertebrae which are the vertebrae that are present in the thorax we have command the lumbar vertebrae which are the vertebrae that are presented in the lumbar and the lumbar is the like um it's uh the lower part of your back okay so the lower region of your back we call it the lumbar uh, we also have uh, the sacrum or we call it the sacral vertebrae. So the sacral vertebrae are a group of vertebrae, but they are fused together, they're not separated, so that's why we call it the sacrum. So we also have the coccyx, or we call them the coccygeal vertebrae, and it's a, um, a group of vertebrae as well, but they are fused. Uh, so instead of calling them coccygeal vertebrae, we call them coccyx. So uh, this is a yani, um, simple picture. It will help you to yani, be familiar with the cervical, thorax, and lumbar. So where are they exactly? Well, in this picture, we're going to know, inshallah. So let's start with the red color here. So the red color uh, in this region uh, called the cervical. Okay, it's called the, cerv uh, the cervical region. So this cervical region, the uh, vertebrae, بيكون فيها بنحكي عنهم cervical vertebrae تحت cervical vertebrae بيجي عندنا region تانية بتمتد من النك till the iris diaphragm so we call uh, this region the thorax and the vertebrae and this uh, region we call them the, ver uh, the thoracic vertebrae and after the thorax we have this region Her anterior it's the abdomen but I'm not talking about anterior, I'm talking about the posterior part. So this region is actually called the lumbar. Okay, what we call it? The lumbar. As I said, the lower region of your back, we call it the lumbar. So these yellow things, vertebrae are resident in lumbar, so we call them the lumbar vertebrae. And after that, we're going to get into these beautiful vertebrae that are fused together, and they have a green color. So we call them the sacrum. And after that, we have these uh, small vertebrae that we also fuse together. So we also call them the coccyx. Okay, and we're gonna get into all of these regions and all of these vertebrae in details later in the video. So now you, it's really really important for you to be familiar with uh, these regions and these. Um, what do you call them in the mustalahat okay because it's really important so yeah the next slide okay uh, in order to understand and in order uh, to understand the how do these vertebrae uh, look like and how, what's their shape and their functions and their structure the structure of the vertebral column so we have to know the typical structure of the structural unit of these vertebrae which are the vertebrae so uh, a typical vertebrae has many um, like uh, regions or many uh, typical structures that should have يعني مش ضروري 
الفقرة يكون فيها كل هذه الأمور اللي أذكرها كما بهذه الصيدات ولكن إلى ما يكون فيها واحدة تنتين ثلاثة بس بشكل عام بهذا الفيديو إن شاء الله أنا راح أحكي المواصفات العامة للفقرة وراح نطبقها على كل نوع من أنواع الفقرات يعني إذا كانت فقرات العنق عن فقرات الأنواع الأخرى فبنعمل بيناتهم مقارنة بينهم وبين التبيكال فيرتبري وبنشوف أعتقد أنها أفضل طريقة للحفظ وأفضل طريقة أيضا للفهم وهي طريقة نفعت معي شخصيا يعني إن شاء الله تفيدكم وإن شاء الله تفهموها علي يا رب So let's start So we have the, uh, the first region which is the Uh, vertebral body which is the body the vertebral body so what is the vertebral body it's uh, it is connected uh, to the intervertebral disc uh, superiorly and inferiorly in general so في منطقة اسمها البادي منطقة البادي وظيفتها انها بيكون بترتبط فيها الديسكس نحكي عنهم intervertebral disc طبعا intervertebral disc مش عظام they are cartilage Okay, well, cartilage is مش موضوع هذا الفيديو, so I'm not gonna get into details of them. فبنحكي إنه أهمية البادي إنها بيكون في عليها like discs. هاي الديسك من خلالها ب يعني بيكون في فصل بين الفقرات اللي بيكونوا فوق بعض. Okay, so فأنا بحكي in general بيكون في عنا بكل فقرة بالبادي تبعها فوقها وتحتها في discs. طبعا هاي إذا كانت بالنص مش إذا كانت يعني أول فقرة أو آخر. فقرة، so ما راح يكون في عليها تنتين discs، okay؟ so هلا sometimes بما إني أنا بحكي عن typical vertebrae ولأنها كتير similar to thoracic vertebrae، so um, أحيانا thoracic vertebrae مش أحيانا كلهم uh, بيكون فيهم like uh, على البادي زي what we call them superior and inferior demi facets. Uh, Uh, what is the demi facets? Demi facets are facets, and you must be familiar with what facets mean. Okay, um, so it is superior and inferior facets, and they're only presented in the thoracic vertebrae. Uh, why, why that? Uh, well, we're gonna get, uh, we're gonna say why in the video later. So um, now I want you to be familiar with the body. Okay, let's keep on. So it's called bidicals, not bendicals. Okay. Uh, they are, um, well, so what are they? There are two short processes that connect the body of the vertebrae to the arch. هما عبارة عن مناطق اوكي وقصيرة موجودة بالفقرة وبتربط بين البادي والارش. سواء البادي عرفنا شو البادي بس الارش ما هو الارش؟ well رح احكي لكم شو الارش بس لسه لما نعرف what is the lamina. So the lamina كمان في عنا two laminas. اللامينا طبعا بتكون joined together في منطقة معينة هما تنتين بس مرتبطين مع بعض and are found on the posterior part of the vertebrae so اللامينا بتكون posterior والبندكلس بتكون anterior so now what is the arch? arch it is a circle of bones around the canal through which the spinal cord passes so الارش هي عبارة عن uh, like bones okay هدول ال bones بتعمل زي بتحيط بالكنال يعني هلا الكنال بيكون مكون يعني هو عبارة عن قناة قناة like cylinder قناة بتكون زي الأسطوانية كان اف هلا هاي القناة بتكون معمولة من زي بنحكي عنهم vertebral foramens كل فقرة بيكون في عليها زي vertebral foramen كل لما تترتب الفقرات فوق بعض The vertebral foramens كمان بتترتب فوق بعض فوق بعض بشكلها زي قناة بنحكي عنها canal. هلا هاي القناة وظيفتها إنه تحمي ال spinal cord. So بكل vertebrae, okay, العظام اللي بتشكل أو بتحيط بال vertebral foramen, okay, تبع هاي ال vertebrae فمنسميها ال arch. So حسب ما أنا قلت ال arch فهي مكونة من bidicals. As well as the lamina, so two bidicals and two laminas. Okay, we have also the spinous process. So, what is the spinous process? Well, it extends downward and backward. Uh, here, the spinous process here امتداد بتكون للمنس, I guess. Uh, بتكون امتداد للخلف وكمان لتحت. للخلف ولا تحت ايك الامتداد بيكون طبعا لما نشوف شكل السبينس بروسس راح تفهموا علي شو قصدي 
so um طبعا حاطه انا النوت it might be bifid just like the cervical vertebrae uh, but the typical vertebrates are not so spinal sports is احيانا بيكون bifid so what do i mean by bifid يعني مقسوم يعني ما بيكون زي um, like uh, like كتلة واحدة او عظمة واحدة بتكون عظمة مقسومة لعظمتين صغار تفصل بينهم مسافة فبنحكي عنهم سباينوس سوري بايفيد سو اذا ما كان uh, ما كان مفصول بينهم يعني بتكون على شكل عظمتين مفصول بينهم مسافة كان واحدة بنحكي عنهم انك انه نوت سباينوس نوت بايفيد اوكي بس يس سو ذيس از ذا سباينوس بروسيس انا ريلي وونت يو تو بي فاميلير وذ ات طبعا التيبيكال فيرتيبراي ما بيكون فيها ما بتكون بايفيد Okay, and we also have something called transverse process. Yeah, uh, the transverse process can be called empty dadat, but not like the spinous empty dadat to the left. Okay, or to the right. But the transverse process is empty dadat to the atraf. Meaning, we call them lateral. Okay, so they are extends laterally, but the spinous process extends downward and backward. Okay. Uh, transverse processes are actually two lateral transverse processes. The one I the command note, they might have facets for the articular part of the tubercle, uh, uh, tubercle of the rib, uh, if they were uh, thoracic, and they also might have a transverse foramen as well, as anterior and posterior articular processes, just like the C3, C7 cervical vertebrae. We also uh, might have superior and inferior articular facets. Or processes. Uh, so these superior and inferior articular facets, between are present in a area called ventricular lamina junctions. So with ventricular lamina junctions, we have to make superior, which is in general, in general, we have to superior and inferior articular facets. The uh, articular facets in them are between the vertebrae, which are on top of each other, and the vertebrae, not the vertebrae, the vertebrae, which are on top of each other. Um, بيرتبطوا مع بعض عن طريق ال these uh, facets or these processes. Um, okay, ماشي. Mm, so the superior and the inferior articular uh, articular notches. Well, there's also notches. Okay, sometimes it be superior and inferior articular notches. Whatever. Okay, uh, between the vertebrae there is an interventral uh, intervertebral foramen, also known as the neural foramen. Okay, uh, if we look at the vertebral column, okay, from the like laterally, look at it, not seen from inferior, uh, anterior or posterior, but laterally, uh, or from the right side or from the left side, whatever, you can find some like foramens, okay, and I'm gonna get into them in video. So just sober type. So these intervertebral foramen, we also call them neural foramen. Uh, how do they these foramens form? Well, uh, these are openings formed from the notched area of the superior and the inferior borders of the adjacent vertebrae. Uh, okay, so here is the uh, vertebra uh, vertebral column as you see. So look, we say it is a column, but it's not actually it looks like a yeti. Uh, a column. It's actually curved. Okay, so let's uh, check these curves like that. Okay, uh, so this is your uh, vertebral column. Then, um, okay, th we know that the, here is the the regions of it. So here is the cervical vertebrae. Here is the thoracic vertebrae. And here is the lumbar uh, vertebrae. And here is the sacrum and the coccyx. Okay, so uh, let's get a little bit closer to it. So if you really just look at these places, I actually talked about something called intervertebral foramen or neural foramen. So here is the intervertebral foramen or the neural foramen, as you see here. So check this out. Here is it. Okay. And let's now get into a, one of the typical vertebrae. And as I said, told you before, uh, like all the thoracic vertebrae are considered uh, to be a uh, typical vertebrate because they have all the like all the regions or all the structures I've talked about before so let's get closer into one of these and get to know the places of the things I have said before 
So here is the beautiful vertebrae and it's a typical vertebrae. So let's start. So let's start with this orange region. Well, this orange region, it's actually called uh, the body. So we said that there is a vertebral body or the vertebral body. So here is the vertebral body. Uh, okay, so the vertebral body, we know that it's anterior. Okay, and the spinous process will be posterior. So and now I'm looking at the anterior aspect of uh, this uh, vertebrae and how it's located. Uh, in the vertebral column, if I look at it from the anterior uh, anterior view, okay. So, yes. So uh, I want you to be also familiar with the spelling. So, uh, and body is not something hard to be spelled, okay. Okay. So let's do that. So, what do we call that? I already said before that um, the body sometimes could have demi facets. So yes, and this kind of body, it has a demi facet because it is a thoracic one. And only the thoracic uh, vertebrae have the, what we call it, the facet. So uh, let's get familiar to the spelling. So please spell it for us. Superior costal facets. Okay, so there are superior costal facets. And this region here, so there are two. One in this region, and here is the same event, but in the another region. So it's also called uh, costal facets, but they are inferior costal facets. You, okay? So yes. So now we're done with the body. So check this. Uh, like had the loan a second here because the the monthly a high. So the monthly I will notice that there are two of them. Uh, على كل جانب. So the monthly is the same as the pedicles. So let's get familiar to this spelling as well. So please spell it. Pedicles. Pedicles. So we call them pedicles. Okay. Okay. After pedicles, we're going to see this green region here. Okay. So the pedicles are attached to the lamina. Okay. And the pedicles and the lamina together, they made the, what we call it, the uh, the foramen, but just let with it. So uh, let's get familiar to the spelling of the lamina. Laminae. Sorry, it's laminae. Okay, whatever. Laminae. Uh, so it's called laminae. Okay, so the laminae and the ventricles. We have uh, actually we have two laminae. Okay, one here and one here. So we have laminae as well as ventricles. They made up the foramen we call it the vertebral foramen so this region called the vertebral foramen so please spell it for us vertebral foramen wow vertebral foramen okay so we said before that there is kind of junctions in the uh, lamina bendical obviously like bendical laminal junctions uh, okay, so this superior junctions, as you see, it's in the uh, in each side. We call these superior junctions uh, superior articular processes. And we said before that these superior articular processes is to articulate the vertebrae above each other and, uh, yeah, that are related above each other or below each other or whatever. So how do we spell this up? Superior articular processes. Okay, superior articular processes. We also have inferior articular processes, which are, they're supposed to be somehow somewhere in here, I guess here. There are the inferior notch, so, yes, so here is the inferior articular processes. So, yeah, we also have inferior articular processes in the bedical uh, laminae um, junction. It's kind of a uh, like vertical laminae junctions, so please spell it for us. Inferior articular processes. Thank you. So we have two, one on each side. Uh, okay, so let's get into the posterior aspect of that beautiful, uh, adorable, um, what do we call it? <laughs> vertebrae, or typical vertebrae. So as we see, we have in like two lateral processes, okay, which I just have uh, like uh, change their color, change their color. So they are actually called transverse processes. Okay, so please fill it for us. Transverse processes. So they are the transverse processes. Okay.
Okay, but before I um, get to something new, we, in the thoracic, uh, the, we actually I'm telling you a thoracic vertebrae because it's really similar to the typical one. So it ha uh, the thoracic kind of vertebrae, they have what we call the processes. Okay, of um, kind of a facets. Okay, and home for the facets, عشان ترتبط مع ال tubercle of the um, rib. Okay, because the thoracics that هم ال ال فقرات الوحيدات اللي بيكونوا مرتبطين مع ال ribs تبع ال قفص الصدري or what we call it uh, the rib cage. Okay. So um, let's get into this part. So we know that this region, this green region, as we said before, that's the lamellae, and this uh, this uh, process that extends backward and downward, we say it's actually called the spinous process. So please read this one. Spinous process. It's actually spinous process. Sorry, I just pronounced it the wrong way, but whatever. It's called the spine uh, spinous process. Okay, so I guess we are now done uh, from the typical vertebrae. So let's get back to the slides. Now let's start with the cervical vertebrae. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So there are actually seven uh, vertebrae and they are small and light vertebrae. They actually extend from the posterior of the skull to the superior of the first thoracic vertebrae. Yes, so we know that this uh, this region is actually attached to the uh, occipital. We know that, um, and the last of this region is actually attached to the first um, thoracic vertebrae. So this region, which is uh, exists in the cervix. For cervical region, so we call it the, call these vertebrae the cervical vertebrae. So okay, yes. So what is the me? Uh, yeah, they form an overall concave posterior shape. So uh, you know what is concave mean? Concave means like when we talk about concave lenses, uh, actually mirrors. Concave mirrors. I actually put this picture here. So the concave mirror is that mirror that no bikun al satha al amla so satha al bikun. زي داخل الكرة اوكي سو داخل السطح اللي بيكون زي كأنه داخل الكرة بيكون هو سطح الأملس أما السطح اللي بيكون الخارجي للكرة فبيكون هو سطح الخشن ومش هو الميرور سو so إذا كان السطح الأملس أو وات وي كول المداخل الكرة فبنحكي عنها كونكيف ميرور سو طبعا أنا هون الصورة عندي معكوسة فإذا عكست هاي الصورة زي إنه اليمين الشمال والشمال يمين فرح تطلع إكزاكتلي uh, مثل السيرفيكال uh, السيرفيكال vertebrae فرح نحكي عن السيرفيكال vertebrae has an overall uh, concave posterior shape اوكي هلا المين فيتشرز اللي بتميز السيرفيكال vertebrae كالتالي اول شي في عنا ال vertebrae اللي اسمها atlas atlas it is the C1 اوكي السيرفيكال vertebrae 1 اوكي so اول فقرة في ال السيرفيكال uh, vertebrae اسمها Atlas. So why do I say Atlas من مميزات the cervical vertebrae? Because إنه إلها زي structure uh, خاص uh, بيختلف عن the vertebrae الأخرى. نفس الشيء أيضا the axis. The axis كمان هي C2, which is the second uh, cervical vertebrae. كمان في إنه structure تبعها بيختلف عن the Atlas. Uh, بيختلف عن ال uh, vertebrae الأخرى فإلها structure يعني مميز so that's why بنحكي عنهم إنهم بيميزوا cervical vertebrae so in general they have small bodies and short bifid spinous processes um, why do I put process واحدة it's actually processes I'm sorry I just didn't really say so so that okay um, okay so they have uh, bifid spinous processes and I say bifid means انها بتكون من قطعتين من فصلتين مش قطعة واحدة طبعا مش كلهم بيكونوا بايفيد بتكون من ال C2 which is the axis till the C6 هلا ليش الاتلس وال C7 ما عندهم هلا بالنسبة للاتلس اصلا ما عندها spinous process آه ورح نشوف هلا بتركيبها ان شاء الله انه ما عندها اما بالنسبة لل C7 فحسب الكتاب فهي لا تعتبر بايفيد آه اوكي so let's keep on and start with the atlas so atlas which is the c1 
the first cervical vertebrae. So compared, oh, okay, let's just um, fix this up. Okay, so the atlas, which is the C1. طبعا زي ما حكيت في بداية الفيديو إنه أنا لما بدي أدرس كل واحدة من الفقرات بدي أقارنها مع التبيكال vertebrae من حيث ال structures أو المين features أو المين structures اللي كانت موجودة بالتبيكال one فأعتقد إنها هي أفضل طريقة للدراسة أنا استخدمتها شخصيا وكتير نفعت معي إن شاء الله تنفع معكم كمان في الفيديو so let's start so أول شيء نحس نحكي عن ال body so we talk that there is a vertebral body. So what is about the atlas? Does the atlas have a body? Well, the atlas has no body. So there is nobody in the atlas. So what is have? But if we want to body, إيش ممكن ألاقي إذا ما في body? So I said instead it has an anterior arch. Okay, feet like arch, but the arch anterior and be going أمامي. As well as anterior articular surface with uh, which word articulate tense of axis. Uh, okay, هلا في المنطقة البدل البادي لأنه ما عندها بادي شو رح نلاقي بدلها؟ رح نلاقي في شيء اسمه anterior arch ومع ال anterior arch في عندنا uh, anterior articular surface. Uh, هلا ما شو ده شو أهمية هذا ال anterior articular surface؟ رح يرتبط مع الدنس اللي بتكون في ال axis. Okay, uh, well لما ناخذ تركيب ال axis وناخذ نفهم شو هو ال dense of axis. Okay, so now we have to put in our minds that Atlas has no body. Okay, so what is about the pedicle? So it has no pedicle and it has no laminae, and instead it has. So what is the pedicle and laminae? Ma fi. طب شو رح يكون بدل منطقة اللي فيها pedicle والمنطقة اللي فيها laminae في الأطلس? So it has two lateral masses in which their superior surface articulate with the occipital condyles of the occipital bone. Uh, أول شيء راح نلاقي بدل اللامنة والبديكالز في منطقتهم what we call them lateral masses أهمية ال lateral masses بيكون السطح العلوي لإلها بيرتبط مع ال occipital condyles we know that the atlas is the first vertebrae and the, we know that the vertebral column actually severely attached with the occipitals uh, with the occipital so uh, because atlas is the first vertebrae okay so it has lateral masses which are attached to the uh, occipital condyles uh, and it also have uh, this region have a groove this groups is for uh, vertebral artery and the first cervical spinal nerve okay so this groove is for the vertebral artery and the first cervical spinal nerve okay let's keep into other structures so we have to put in mind it has nobody no pedicles no lamina uh, and it has lateral masses as well as a groove instead of lamina and pentacles and instead of the body it has an anterior arch as well as art, um, anterior articular surface that would articulate with the of X. What about the transverse process? Does it have a transverse process? Yes, it does. Okay, and the and this transverse process has something called transverse foramen. Okay, so it has a transverse process with a transverse foramen, so keep this in mind. Uh, what about the spinous process? It also does not have a spinous process. So what does it have instead? Well, instead, there is a posterior arch that has an a posterior tubercle. Okay, so instead of having a spinous process, في منطقة اللي فيها spinous process رح يلاقي إشي اسمه posterior arch that has a posterior tubercle. So let's see it 3D and let's see a picture of it as well. Okay. Well, this is the beautiful atlas, what we call it the C1. And as we see, this is an anterior review of this beautiful atlas, so let's get into it. So this green thing, on, uh, what we call it, we said that it has an anterior arch and tubercle. So please read it for us. Anterior arch and tubercle. And this region, it actually called the lateral masses and superior articular facets. Okay, please read it for us. Lateral masses and superior articular facets. Okay, so now we know exactly where is the lateral masses and uh, the anterior arch and the tubercles. So these beautiful things are the transverse process. And this transverse process has a foramen. Okay, please read it for us. 
transverse processes, and foramina. Okay, so let's get into the posterior view of this beautiful uh, atlas. So, okay, so this is probably gonna be the uh, posterior arch that we talk about. So please read it for us. Posterior arches. Yeah, they are actually posterior arches. So we have actually two arches, not one. Okay, so what is this beautiful, um, like, uh, yeah, it now turns into uh, blue. Yeah, it was orange and now it's blue. Yeah, so it's called a posterior tubercle. Okay, please read it. Posterior tubercle. So these yellow things are the groove. Okay, groove for the vertebral artery. Please read groove it. for vertebral artery. It's vertebral artery. Thank you. It's graves for vertebral arteries. Okay, so I guess now uh, there's no other things we have to have a look at this. Yeah, I almost forgot. So this region between the posterior and the anterior uh, arches is actually called the vertebral foramen. Vertebral foramen. So uh, now I guess it's really obvious and it's really clear all the regions. Hope so you do understand it. And let's get into another, another vertebrae. So here is the beautiful atlas. Uh, and this is an, uh, like we call it a superior view. Uh, okay, so this region, uh, like the this region here, that is close to the lateral masses, uh, this is called the uh, anterior arch. And here is the, in the anterior arch, we said that there is uh, a tubercle for the dense of X. And these are so obvious, the lateral masses, and they have the superior uh, articular process. And this is the beautiful, like, ears. They look like ears, yeah. Um, they are the transverse process with the transverse foramina. Uh, and this is the two uh, posterior arches. Uh, and this region is actually called uh, uh, like posterior tubercle. Okay, so I guess now you must be uh, familiar with the atlas. Okay, so try re to revise it more than once and try to see it 3D. And Bilab, inshallah, you'll get familiar to it more and more. So let's get into another one. So the axis, which is C2. So the axis C2, as the name indicates, so it is the second uh, cervical vertebrae. So compared also with the uh, like with the uh, typical vertebrae. So I also going to compare it with the typical vertebrae as I did before. So there is a small uh, body that has an dennis. Okay, so it actually has a small body with an. So as I said, uh, it has a body, a small body actually, and this body has severely something called dance, or we can call the odon, uh, odontoid process, okay? Uh, okay, so what about the pendicles? So uh, there are both pendicles and lamina with both superior and inferior articular processes. So it has pendicles and it has a lamina and they have superior and inferior articular processes. It also have a transverse articular process with a transverse foramina. Okay, and it has a bifid uh, short spinax process. Uh, cool. So is there anything else? No? Wait. Okay, so we have we, are, we probably have familiar with these things now. So let's uh, see them 3D. So this is an interior view of the axis, which is the C2, as we see. So let's get uh, familiar to the structure. So first of all, this is, you're probably going to know what is that. So this is the body, okay? And I said that superior to the body, we're going to find something called dense. And exactly, this is the dense of axis, okay? And uh, we said then there is a bendicle, which is... Uh, this is a transverse process and a foramen. Okay, yeah, this is a transverse process. We Okay, so here is the transverse process. Look how does it look like. And this transverse process has a foramen, as I said before. 
and above the transverse process we're gonna find the superior articular process uh, processes sorry because there are two uh, one on each side and if we just move it this way we're gonna find the bed bedicles so the bedicles uh, like located in this region so yes okay here is the pedicles and after the pedicle we're gonna find the laminae and after that laminae here is the uh, spinous process which is a bifid spinous process it's not gonna be really strong but it's actually uh, it consists like um, like two kind of structures there have a space between them okay so and this is definitely gonna be the vertebral foramen of the axis which is the c2 um yeah and that's all so hope so that you're now familiar to the structure of the axis uh so let's get back into these slides so here is a picture of it but this picture is actually of a uh, posterior superior to the axis so let's just mic the things again so as we see that there is definitely going to be the body above the body there is the dense and this is the superior articular process and here is the transverse process with the foramen here and this is the bendicle and this is the bendicle not bendicle and this is the laminae and here we got the uh, spinous process and the, this region here we say it is the vertebral for Robin. okay so this is all about the axis okay so this picture shows us how the axis and uh, the atlas are connected with each other so uh, I actually put this photo just to show you how the disc of axis is uh, actually attached to the articular anterior uh, to the uh, anterior articular process of the uh, anterior arch of the atlas okay so here is this region and let's get into another thing so from c3 to c6 uh, vertebrae of the like cervical vertebrae they are actually uh, have almost the same structure and also c7 has the same structure as to them but the only difference between them and the C7 is that the C7 does not have a bifid uh, spinous process, whereas C3 and C6 are with a bifid spinous process, but they actually have the same uh, structure. So what are uh, so I'm gonna compare them also with the typical vertebrae as well uh, as I, what I have for done. Okay, so let's start. So they have a small bodies. Okay. They have pedicles and lamina with superior and inferior articular process. Okay. They have a transparent process with a transverse foramina as well as anterior and posterior articular process. Well, this is something new. So they have a transverse process with a transverse foramina. Okay. But they have also anterior and posterior articular processes and the transverse process. Okay. So you have to put this in mind. And they also have a bifid spinous process. And uh, if we move from C3 to C6, we just laugh and laugh. And the spinous process is a little Okay, كل ما انتقلت من C3 إلى C6. And as I told you, C7 نفس نفس ال structure, بس الاختلاف الوحيد بيكون the spinous process. And C7 is not bifid, but C6 is actually bifid. So um, let us see it 3D. So here is the, uh, this region shows us the uh, cervical vertebrae. So here is the atlas, and this is the axis, and this is the C3, this is the C4, this is the C5, this is the C6, and this is the C7. So as we see, the, from C3 to C6, they almost have the same structure as I said before. And if you look in this region, uh, you're going to find that the spinous process is getting longer when moving from C3 to C7 uh, but C7 is also have the same structure almost the same structure but the only difference is that it has a not bifid uh, spinous process so let's get uh, to know one of the structure of one of them because they have a similar structure so I'm gonna use the C3 for all the whole okay uh, okay so here is it I really would like to have first 
an anterior view of it. So let's see. So this is definitely the body. And look now, the body is, okay, it's small, but it's obvious that it's the body. Okay, so there are, these are definitely that transverse process. So here is that transverse process, and the transverse process has a foramen, as we said before, and the and two new structures uh, for the cervical vertebrae we have to be familiar with, which are the anterior tubercle of transverse process and the posterior tubercle of the transverse process. We have to be familiar with this. And after that, we're going to get into this, like, small uh, things, which called the pedicles. And uh, above the pedicles, we got the superior articular process. And if we just look here, which is below the superior articular process, we're going to find the inferior articular process. And after the pedicle and these two processes, we're going to definitely find the laminae. And if we just roll it this way you're definitely going to know that this region is called the spinous process and uh, uh, like now it's really obvious that it's bifid, look at that so look at these uh, two uh, projections here so it's really obvious that it's a bifid spinous process and definitely you know that this foramen called the vertebral foramen well it's really obvious so hope that you are now familiar with all the cervical vertebrae. So before I finish, I actually want you to see the C7 as well. So the C7, as I said, they have the same, almost the same structure, but the only difference is that the spinous process is not by fit. Okay, not by fit. Here is the body. Here is the uh, posterior lateral limb. Well, it's you know, something extra. Uh, but يعني مش خلط الواحد إنه كمان يعرف هذا الشيء. Okay, so and it has the same structure as the others, so I don't have to repeat that because we're just wasting time. Uh, so let's get into the thoracic. Uh, but. So let's now start with the thoracic vertebrae. So the thoracic vertebrae is actually made up of twelve vertebrae. Uh, that are all articulate with ribs through two demi facets as well as two facets for the articular part of the tubercle of the ribs presented in the transverse process. So the spinal cord uh, formed by the thoracic vertebrae uh, protects, uh, sorry, uh, protrudes uh, posteriorly to form a convex thoracic curve of the uh, spine. Okay, so here we go. Yes, so it's actually made of 12 vertebrae, as I said before. Uh, what's make them, يعني, maybe may use them and get them in the vertebrae is that they're actually attached to the uh, ribs of the rib cage. Uh, and how do they attach with it? They actually have special structures, which are the demi facets, which are presented in the body. We have the inferior and posterior demi facets. We're going to get to know them later in the video. They also have. Uh, uh, another facets and they are articulate with the tubercle part of the rib and they are presented in the transverse process we also gonna look uh, at them in later in the video as well okay okay so the general features of these vertebrae are the following so uh, the t1 vertebrae is the smallest and closely resemble the cervical vertebrae so when i said the t1 means it's the first thoracic vertebrae because it's uh, so close to the um, like cervical vertebrae so we consider it to be similar to them so we know that cervical uh, vertebrae have small bodies so uh, so it's kind of be kind of a little bit small so it's similar to them okay and t12 is close to the lumbar uh, vertebrae so we haven't take anything about lumbar vertebrae but they have large bodies and thick and large bodies. So the T12 is the largest and the most similar to the lumbar vertebrae. So the intermediate vertebrae between the T1 and the T12 are يعني, all follow the trend of increasing size from superior to inferior. يعني, لما أمشي من T1 إلى T12 uh, بنزول فرح يلاحظ أنه السايز عم بيزيد معي uh, بالسايز بيزيد معي كل ما اقتربت من T12 يعني اللي عند اللمبر فاتبري so منطق okay so this is how it looks like 
see how it curves like that okay um, yeah so let's get into the features so now we're in the hnamel comparison pain in thoracic vertebrae as well as uh, the typical vertebrae. I said before in the video that the typical vertebrae is really similar to the thoracic one. So uh, they are actually the same, but I will just repeat it again so that you will get more and more and more familiar. So let's keep on. So what about the body? So uh, it has a body and the body have superior and inferior demi facets. Okay, what is the function of demi facet? It's to articulate with the head of the rib. They also have two pedicles and two lamina, and they have superior and inferior articular facets and latches. We know that. We, they have both spinous process and two transverse processes that have facets for the articular part of the tubercle of the rib. So it has spinous process. Uh, okay, when her command contain transverse process, we may use the transverse process and her kid man her foramen, the cervical, mabn al kharbat, but sona and her what we call it facets. Her facets turtubat ma a tubercle of the rib. Yarikama bitsat fear to bottle ribs, or to bottle thoracic vertebrae by ribs. I shan't even do rib cage, okay? So here we got a little bit of notes. So the thoracic vertebrae are medium in size. So if we talk about the thoracic vertebrae compared to the vertebrae of the so they are medium in size and large and thick than the cervical vertebrae above them and smaller and thinner than the lumbar below them. Well, this is very obvious and very clear. Okay, so let's now get into... Um, so here is a beautiful uh, thoracic vertebra, uh, as we see. So I just have to say that you know, the fakarat of the thorax, all of them are different in the shape, but they are different in the size of them. So we are going to move from T1 to T12, but it will increase with me. But all of them are almost the same structure. So I'm going to focus on T1, okay? And the same structure is going to be changed. So let's get into it. So definitely, this is as I say, I always start with the anterior. Uh, this is an anterior view. Okay, uh, so let's see. So this is definitely the body of the uh, vertebra. And I said, no, because the body of the thoracic vertebra will be two different facets, as we say. Uh, so we call it superior costal facets. And this called inferior costal facets okay and they are both in the body okay so this is definitely the superior articular process uh, processes because they are actually two in one two in each side uh, one on each side sorry and definitely this is the lamina okay here is the lamina it's actually here all of this it's called the lamina and uh, this is the transverse process. We know that this is the transverse process. And actually, we have two transverse processes. And these beautiful things on the transverse process are actually facets for uh, the transverse process. These facets will articulate with the tubercle of the rib. Okay? So they are in both transverse processes. So let's do that. So this is definitely the inferior articular process. And it's one on each side. And they are in the lamina, uh, below the lamina, or the inferior part of the lamina. Uh, for projections, these projections are the inferior articular process. And here we got the spinous process, as we see. So it's really obvious. And this beautiful region, triangular region, it's actually the vertebral foramen. So, uh, yes. And this is all. This is it. I actually explained uh, the structure of all of the thoracic vertebrae. Okay, well we're done. Well in this picture as we see this is the thoracic vertebrae. I'm showing it uh, uh, like th this we have uh, two different views. We have uh, like axial overhead view and lateral view. So as I said they all have the same structure but they're different in size. So as we see here is the body and these two are the uh, like 
like uh, the uh, these are the demi facets and this is the superior articular process and here is the lamina as we talked about before and here is the processes and these are the sorry spinous process and these are the transverse process and this is the uh, facet for the tubercle of the rib mojudala transverse process and if you look at the lateral side here so here is the spinous process these are the uh, like these are the demi the demi facets and above uh, about in this region like this one had the ارتفاع or had the elevation will be called the superior uh, articular process and in terms of the transverse process we can find the command facet high facet we can the tubercle of the rib as I said before and here is the body and here is the uh, yeah here is we got the intervertebral foramen yes it's not going to be obvious here but if I have another vertebrae uh, below it or above it, so this much will be a hikunikteer wadah ma'na bi al video. Now we reach the lumbar vertebrae. Uh, okay, so the lumbar vertebrae are actually five vertebrae. They are uh, found along the body's midline in the lumbar. So the lumbar is the lower back region, the mid, the middle, uh, lower back of the region. We actually call it the lumbar. So the vertebrae that are presented in the wrist region, we call them the lumbar vertebrae. So yes, so the shape of these, uh, they actually form a concave posterior shape, just like uh, the cervicals. But if we're going to get into the like thoracic, they actually form a convex posterior shape. But uh, the cervical, as well as uh, the uh, lumbar, they form a concave posterior shape. Shape. So the general features of the vertebrae is that, as I said before, they are uh, strong and thick. Okay, they have larger bodies, um, large bodies. Okay, they are also thick and large bodies. They also have thick and uh, short bedicles and laminas. They have flat, hatched, shaped spinous process, and they also have thick and strong bodies. Okay. So you supposed to be familiar with these things. You definitely have been familiar with that because I've repeated them millions of times. So let's start with the L1 and the L5, um, which we are the lumbar vertebrae. So they are all uh, similar in the structure. They just may be different in size, uh, just like the uh, thoracic before them. So let's compare them with the uh, typical vertebrae. So. Uh, what about the bodies? As we say, they have thick and large bodies. Okay. They have vertical's and laminas with superior and inferior articular processes. Okay. Which are oriented in a way to lock the lumbar vertebrae together to provide uh, stability. So if we just have a look at the, the lumbar, we just, uh, they are actually oriented in a way that they are really locked together. Okay, they're really stable, they're really strong. Okay, so I'm gonna show you that in 3D uh, image, inshallah. So they also have uh, two transverse processes, okay, uh, and they have flat hatchet shaped spinous processes. So they're really very similar to the typical one, but they're not typical because it doesn't have demi facets and uh, whatever. Uh, okay, but they're really small to it, okay? So let's have a 3D look of them. So hello again. So as we see, this is the first lumbar vertebrae. Here is the second one. Here is the third one. Here is the fourth, and here is the fifth one. So they all they almost have the same structure. As I said, they may different size, but whatever. I'm just gonna take any of them and explain them. So Bismillah. So let's get the anterior view of it. Mio, much better. So this is the body. So notice that there is not any facets, okay? Because the um, lumbar doesn't actually connect with the ribs, okay? Only the thoracics connect to the ribs, so it doesn't have demi facets, okay? And this red region, it's actually the pedicles, and this is small transverse process. Notice that there is no foramen on the transverse process, and also there is no facets, okay? So it's only a transverse process like only a transverse process, okay, with no foramen and no facets. And this 
uh, is definitely the superior articular process and here is the inferior articular process and between them of course it is the lamina and this is small thing it's called the mammillary process uh, well it's uh, above the superior articular process and uh, we have here the spinous process uh, as shown and this is a triangle uh, or triangular um, foramen called the vertebral foramen uh, notice that it's really small yes so and just check uh, just notice how the body is thick it's really really thick if I compare it to other bodies so they're not that much of thickness um, and I guess now I'm done with it uh, it's really simple and I hope that uh, after all of this, you're now familiar with all the structures, okay? Because I've repeated them uh, over a million times, okay? So let's get back to the slides. So here is a very simple, fast picture. I know it's not uh, the resolution is really bad for it, but it's not really a bad picture. I need to feel about it. So let's see. So here we got the axial overhead view, and we have the lateral stride view, as we see. So this is definitely the body okay here is the uh, like uh, vertical's and this is the superior articular process with the mammary um, facet and here is the transverse process here is the spinous process and this region is called the lamina and here is the vertebral foramen which has a triangular region so if I look at it in the lateral side this is going to be the body okay this is definitely the ventricle and this is the superior articular process with the mammary facet and here is the inferior articular process as you see and here is the inferior articular notch and here is the posterior articular notch uh, and this is the spinous process uh, and now I'm done with the structure of the lumbar uh, vertebrae I hope that you uh, are now familiar with its structure uh, okay so let's get to something new so the sacral uh, vertebral or the Sacrum. Uh, so the sacral vertebral uh, are actually um, five. It is a, first of all, it has a triangular shape on. Okay, and as you see from this a beautiful picture, it's actually located. It's kind of the lower most portion of the vertebral column. Okay, and it forms the uh, like uh, we say the posterior wall of the pelvis girdle. Um, and it consists of five fused vertebrae, uh, forms the posterior wall of the pelvis, and they articulate with the articular surface of the hips. Uh, and we can understand it, be, uh, it's kind of a little bit, um, it has different structure than other vertebrae. So, uh, so yeah, focus, please focus with me and pay attention. Uh, it's really simple. But it's, it's different than the other vertebrae, so please pay attention in the 3D uh, view of it. So this is the 3D view of the uh, sacrum. Uh, okay, so let's start. So this is a uh, anterior view of the sacrum as we see. So this large green area, we call it the body of the sacrum. Okay, and as we see it has a like uh, five foramens five on each side so there are actually ten so these foramens are actually uh, in each two foramen on the same uh, lateral uh, in the same side yani okay these two for example these two uh, are actually um, like mammary means the same uh, sacral vertebrae okay uh, okay they are from the same sacral vertebrae that's what I'm trying to say uh, so because I'm looking from the anterior view, so these um, so these foramen are called the uh, anterior foramen. So if I'm looking at them from the posterior view, so we say these are the dorsal or the posterior foramen, yeah? and I will come uh, to that later in the video. So let's keep on. So this area here, we call this area the base. Okay, this is the base. And these beautiful little elevations, we call them the sacral uh, alley, I guess. 
please uh, pronounce me. Sacral ally. Sacral ally, sorry. So we call them sacral ally. And if we get into these lower parts, so this is the inferior lateral angles, uh, and it's not really important. And this is the apex. And uh, here, these small things are called the cornua. Okay? So this is the cornua, and this is the apex. The apex and the cornua, and here's the lateral angles. And I guess now we're done of the posterior view. So let's get into, sorry, uh, anterior view. So let's get into the posterior view as we see. So this is the posterior view of the uh, sacrum. So let's get into it. So this is a green area. It's definitely the body. Okay, so what are these two elevations? This is called superior articular processes. Okay, and I said these foramina, when we look at them from the posterior view, so they call the posterior or the dorsal sacral foramina. And uh, this region in here, we call it, um, I'll just, I just don't remember, yeah, lateral sacral crests. And this is, this region here that was the gray, but now it turns into blue, it is the median crest, and these are the lateral crest, and this region is called the median crest. There is such kind of elevations at the median crest, we call these elevations uh, spinous tubercles, okay, spinous tubercles, and um, yeah, and this we call them the lateral angels before, okay, uh, this region called the sacral hiatus. Uh, the sacral hiatus, it's actually a space in the posterior wall of the sacral canal where the laminae of the fifth sacral vertebrae fail to meet. Uh, so that's why we call it the sacral hiatus. Um, and if we look into uh, like the right or the left side of it, or we get a lateral view, so we're going to find this region. So this region called the articular surface. This articular surface actually articulates with the bilbus girdle bones, which are the hips. Okay, so we call it the articular surface that is articulated with the hips of the bilbus bone. So, yeah, this is the sacral bone, or what we call it, the sacrum. So, it's really simple, I told you. It might have a little bit some different... Uh, yeah, I almost forgot. So, here... Uh, we have the sacral canal, okay? This is the sacral canal. It's actually extended from here, it's from the superior to the inferior in here. So here's the same canal, okay? This is the same canal. Uh, okay, so hope that you have understood that. And let's get into the last one, which is the coccyx, okay? So, the coccyx, or the coccygeal vertebrae. Uh, it is a triangular arrangement of a fused bone that is located in the very bottom portion of the spine. So, and it's also called the tailbone. Why? Because it's, look, it's really small and it's, it has triangular shape and it's, uh, our small fused bones are located in the very bottom portion of the spine. Uh, okay. So, um, generally, it's made of four uh, vertebrae fused together. Some cases, it could be three or five. Uh, it depends, but generally, it, there are four. Okay, they are fused, and they are articulate superiorly with the sacrum. Okay, well, that's obvious. So, let's uh, have a look at the coccyx, or have a 3D look of the coccyx. Okay, so here's a anterior view of the purifal coccyx. So, yeah, uh, as you, uh, as Jenny shown, okay, this green portion which turned to brown right now, it's actually the first coccygeal vertebrae, and here is the second one, and here is the third one, and here is the fourth coccygeal vertebrae. Uh, these lateral, like, portions or junctions are actually the transverse processes of the coccyx, and if we have a look at this region here, or oh, these two regions here are called the uh, coccygeal cornua. Okay, these will be attached with the cornua of the sacrum, 
which is located in the like um, what we say it's the inferior part of it so the inferior part of the sacrum medial uh, medial inferior parts of the sacrum will have something so they kind of small junctions and these junctions are called the sacrum cordua so here's a um, posterior view of the coccyx and it's really similar to the uh, anterior one and there is nothing new so we are now done with the coccyx uh, bone so let's have a final look at the whole uh, skeleton uh, okay let's go so this is uh, the axial skeleton we are now I can say we are done of the uh, all parts and all vertebrae of the vertebral, uh, vert the vertebral column so here is it this is how it looks from the posterior uh, from yeah posteriorly this is how it looks from this is the posterior view of it and this is another lateral view and this is how do you do it how does it looks like from the uh, uh, this is the anterior view of it so you just I just almost forget about talking about these things so between the two uh, the bodies of two adjacent vertebrae we're gonna find this small things which are like discs like structures we call them the intervertebral discs okay they are actually made of cartilage uh, and they are located on um, between the bodies of the uh, two uh, vertebrae as we see so let's have a closer look here uh, at this region so that you can understand how these vertebrae are attached to each other uh, throughout the, these. So if we have a look at here and just focus here, so this is uh, the inferior uh, articular process of the superior uh, vertebrae here. And if we, as we see here in the here if you just have focus this is the uh, posterior articular process of the inferior one so look how do they articulate here and here is the inferior notch of the superior one and here is the posterior notch uh, of the inferior one so they form an inter uh, vertebral foramen which we call the neural foramen that i talked about it uh, early in the video so now i can say that i'm done of the vertebral column hope that uh, the video was useful for you and um شكرا كثير والى اللقاء في فيديوهات اخرى ان شاء الله باي